What's up, peoples? It's your boy. Hey, look, it has now been rumored, and this is big, that Sony could possibly be acquiring Remedy Games, and along coming with Remedy Games could be exclusivity to the Island Wake series. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Yo, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because I'm not too proud to ask. Hey, yo, here's the thing. Oh, my. It seems like that the battle for Mindshare is a never ending battle to one entity and another battle that another entity wants to just hold off till 2022. <laughs> and I'll get into that old 2022 date in another video, but here's the thing. Sony just keeps on winning when it comes to mind share, man. They're not giving up. Two big time stories have dropped after the already explosive bombshell that they dropped as far as stories are concerned or interviews are concerned and that was that they're doubling down on the hardcore well now out of nowhere to begin this week off it's been reported that not only is sony looking for studios but while they said that and while they've been visiting studios like remedy remedy has announced that they have regained exclusive access to the Alan Wake franchise, that now they're allowed to promote it on their own. They don't need Microsoft anymore. Wow. So now this is creating a big buzz in the whole gaming stratosphere where a lot of people are now insinuating that not only could Sony be buying Remedy as one of those studios they were talking about, but then they could also have Alan Wake sequels exclusively to the console, whether timed or forever. Let's get into it. First, you know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the whole uh, Sony story, right? Okay, so let's read it. First and foremost, this is the story as told by WCCF Tech. Um, the story headline is Sony is considering acquisition of development studios. The CEO confirms. All right, I'm just going to go down to the part that matters. Speaking with Nakai, and I hope I didn't butcher that, Sony Interactive Entertainment President Jim Ryan revealed that Sony is considering the merger and acquisition of game development companies with giants like Google entering the market with Stadia. Jim Ryan feels that content will become more important than ever. Okay? So then... You take that into consideration along with this studio, I mean, this story from Eurogamer, where it says Alan Wake developer Remedy regains publishing rights. Now, they have an update under here, under the title, and I want y'all to focus on this because this is going to be a big part of our discussion. The update reads, teases Alan Wake going multi-platform. Also, in the update notes, this is at 2.30 p.m., Speaking to Eurogamer, Alan Wake developer Remedy has teased the possibility of a multi-platform release for his previously Microsoft-owned hero. And they say, quote, and this is a quote from Remedy, the only thing that we can clarify now that Remedy owns the publishing rights is that we could bring Alan Wake to different platforms if we choose. A Remedy spokesperson told me this afternoon, pay close attention to that. We can bring it to different platforms. Okay, so what does this all mean? MM2K, why are you dropping a video on this? What is your hyperbole about this time? Well, look, this is not just clickbait, people, okay? Here's the thing. Believe it or not, because I know the gaming community wants you to think that we all, as YouTubers, as content creators, we hate each other. No, that's not true. This big DM with a whole bunch of your favorite YouTubers, and we conversate and go back and forth every day. And a lot of, t and a lot of hyperbole just slips off our backs whether other people want to present stories on it or not. This is creating a lot of buzz, okay? A lot of buzz, period. Now, why is it doing so? Well, let's just go over the history. Let's help you understand what's so big and special about Alan Wake, about Remedy, and the possibility of it coming exclusively to PlayStation in any shape, form, or fashion. Now, Alan Wake was released in 2010. And even though it wasn't an instant success, you know, there were stories 
from publications like your gamer talking about how bad it was doing it eventually had i want to say i think it was five million sales across the board in around 2015 and you know it's starting to grow and grow and grow it had various humble bundle and all these other sales. with that being said it's not hard to fathom that the game is around 10 million now you know what i'm saying so it, it became a cult classic overnight you know what i'm saying and slowly but surely gained popularity because of that remedy was tapped again by microsoft to make quantum break which also started off with his struggles but those struggles led to a lot of uh uh reputational risk for the company with this whole 1080p 60 makes you a better gamer and, and on paper uh quantum break was only at 900p even though the game looked beautiful look or it still looks great you know what i'm saying um after that whole whoop to do the relationship went sour between remedy and microsoft therefore remedy began looking for full independence okay and i look for full independence remedy signed a deal with 505 studios to publish control and i want to show y'all something because a lot of people mistakenly take that remedy deal that they signed with 505 studios uh to mean that 505 studios uh is going to publish all remedy games thereafter no they just signed a deal with control now this is directly from the remedy website at the time that the deal was signed 505 games signs worldwide publishing deal with remedy entertainment 505 games a digital bro subsidiary secures exclusive 20-year rights to the next game from remedy entertainment renowned developer of AAA video game franchises with an investment of 7.75 million euros okay so again it was not for Remedy Games in totality was just for control. So they have exclusive rights to the control franchise, okay? And that is 505 Studios does. Now, recently, there have been bigger murmurs around Sony buying Remedy Games due to the recent visits from PlayStation staff, including Yoshida himself. And if you've been living under a rock and you don't know who Yoshida is, Yoshida is the head of Sony Worldwide Studios, okay? So here's your boy's thoughts. Let's break this all down for the listening public. Um, I know there's doubt out there that Remedy could be bought by uh, Sony, you know, because of that deal with 505 Studios, you know, and, and, and people have brought to light that Sony visits have been visiting really Remedy for a while now. I'm the head of Naughty Dog Studio and Remedy Studio had, are, are friends and they visit each other and whenever Naughty Dog is visiting Remedy they're bringing Yoshida with them but hold on this ain't just for no big powwows you know what I'm saying this has to be for some reason if you're bringing Yoshida with you right so because of that it could have been that Sony's been poaching Remedy Studios all this time right so even though there's those doubts i get it but again a lot of those doubts are based upon this deal that remedy has with 505 studios which is being misconstrued it's only over the rights of control now here's the thing again sony's been fighting for mind share they have doubled down on the hardcore right <laughs> as far as how they're marketing themselves from here on out okay they have put the spotlight on them right after e3 they've made these major announcements and they've made e3 like it, it was it, it never was okay that's because microsoft had the ball in this court and they threw it into the god dag on bleachers and everybody followed suit this was one of the more, most lackluster e3s of all time and it didn't have to be that way so again let's re let, 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 let's we go through the list let's let's revamp i mean let's let's relook at the list and look at where we're at we have possibly a well-known staple of the xbox community game lineup alan wake being the, the control of that game being retaken by remedy and then the high possibility that remedy is going to be under the control of sony whether it's exclusively or them just working on second party deals because look 
there's already exclusive content coming to PlayStation first in the realm of control. That already got the Xbox community up in arms. So who's to say that Sony ain't going for the second round knockout and they're going to take out a You know what I'm saying? Along with Remedy, which is a very good god daggone studio. If all this is true, if all this comes to fruition, and this is announced soon, as many are suspecting, I'm sorry. Follow me, people. Follow me when I say this, but I'm sorry. Phil Spencer, as head of Xbox Gaming or Windows, whatever you want to call it, he has to go. He got to step out, go take an Uber, go to the ESA or ESR, whatever the hell they are, where he belongs, and give a promotion to my man Mike Yabar to take over. Phil Spencer is single-handedly destroying the Xbox brand. And if this comes to fruition, this is going to be the final nail in the coffin. I know I've spent hyperbole that Xbox is dead, but there's still a glimmer of hope. You know what I'm saying? There is a little bit of glimmer of hope. We can make it, we, we, we can uh, force their hand, but we can't do it if Microsoft is gonna continue to turn a blind eye under Phil Spencer, okay? And this is why Phil Spencer's approach to gaming, when he has this much power of his hands, is not only dangerous to the Xbox community, but it's dangerous to gamers in totality. As I've been mentioning, as I've been talking, if this becomes true and a deal is announced this year, that means without being there, Sony has single-handedly destroyed the necessity of E3. Because this is going to be a big deal. Like I said, Phil Spencer, as the head of Microsoft Gaming, as Windows Gaming, had an opportunity to make the showcase spectacular this year and provide a way for all else to ride off the coattails of a spectacular big show, as he said it was. We're coming bigger than we ever had. And instead... He focused on keeping the show unspectacular. Why? Because he's more excited for the stuff that he didn't show. <laughs> like he is each year, goddammit. I mean, seriously. Think about it, people. This will officially kill E3. As a show, as a necessity. Because not only will it negate the need of uh, the heavy cost for the console maker, because they don't need to, they don't need E3 personally anymore. Because E3 is a trade show. But console makers don't trade with retailers the way that they used to. So E3, as far as a trade show, is a necessity, is no longer a necessity. So wisely, the ESRA or ESA, I always mix up their name. The ones that are behind E3, the, 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 the controllers of E3 turn this more into a fan favorite show because that's what it's morphed into and that's why they've opened the doors to the gamers to help keep it relevant because it's no longer a relevant trade show people don't need to spend eight million dollars a day to show up at e3 to sell their goods and services anymore so they made it relevant because it became an uh, uh as a quintual part of fanfare fanfare and if you can get that fanfare bigger than you can at e3 just by staying at home and making announcements like this, when you had a powerhouse that had an opportunity to show you why E3 is still a staple of the gaming community. If that happens, that's gonna be a bummer for fans, man. But you can't blame them. You can't blame them. Decisions have consequences, gamers. You guys continuing to make excuses for Phil will have ramifications for all of us. And this is not how the community looks out for one another. I get it. A lot of us may be happy with our Xbox One X or the Xbox brand as it is. But you can't deny the deliberate, not just mistakes, the deliberate turn away from the hardcore, not only within its own community, but in gaming altogether. Diversity is more than just shapes and colors, people. It's diversity of thought. And it looks like Phil Spencer is on a single man campaign to, to destroy 
the diverse nature of gaming by getting rid of the hardcore gritty, you know what I'm saying, content. If he had his way, it'd be gone. I don't, man, we, we can show the games about more than headshots and, 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 and kills. So you show none at all? Like, come on, man. The biggest game that is about that, you don't even really show the gameplay on the stage? Like, come on, what's going on here? And then you give us some bull like, oh, man, we didn't know that y'all wanted to see the big game on the stage, man. Stop it. This is a campaign, y'all, a campaign that is not working out for gamers. This is bigger than Xbox. The guy had the power of the whole community in his hands at E3. And look what he did with it. Look what he did with it. And because of his actions, primarily, if this comes to fruition, E3 could be dead, even though there's new consoles coming out next year. If everybody, if, if Sony can see, hey, we can do this without coming to E3, we'll just have a special event somewhere and broadcast it to everybody. Then E3's gonna be gone, man. And that's gonna be sad, man. Unbelievable. So we got we to gotta look at this from 5,000 feet, y'all. This is just bigger than being, being happy with your lineup right now, man. This is bigger than that, man. Seriously. We got to we gotta open our eyes and wake up. It's, Phil ain't just stumbling over himself. This is, this, is, this is intentional. This is purposeful. And again, it's going to have long-time ramifications for years to come. And you can't be down the road be like, oh, man, I wish I, I wouldn't have capped for him then. It's going to be too late. Unbelievable, like I said, but I can go on and on forever. That's it from your boy MM2K. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think about what I have to say in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me and come at your boy. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? But if you did like what I have to say, you can catch me on the corner every boulevard. Check out the links below to find me. You know what I mean? Hey yo, I do a show with your peoples. Dirt Griggity, Snow Bunny, Nethos. It's called Scram Punks. We do it on Dirt Griggity's YouTube channel. Check out hashtag ScramPunks for more information on when it's going to air. And yo, follow my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. We doing the damn thing. Check out that Discord link. Check out that Patreon link because we need your support to keep the material up. And check out that gear because it's fly. And last but not least, your boy is doing something big on twitch.tv forward slash mighty most 2000. We're starting a whole new thing, man biggest thing i've done individually as to date it is called the hard knock digital culture you know we're highlighting that gritty content that they trying to get rid of y'all i'm serious that gritty hardcore content whether it comes to games movies anime all that stuff we're highlighting it there you definitely don't want to miss and with that being said you all have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace